Hey guys, Ted from Nerdarchy here for Nerds by Nerds. Hanging out with me today is... Nerdarchy Steve. And today, I want to talk about dragons. But I want to talk about liches. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about dragon liches. liches. Hey, jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter. It's a great way to get RPG tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So we had a request in for us to do a Draco Lich uh, for Dungeons and Dragons and Monsters. So that's just what we're going to do. So 83 of your trusty 5th edition monster manual is the Draco Lich template. So the thing about the Draco Lich that's, that I'm finding a little fascinating is that it there there is this duality to it where the Draco Lich whole existence it seeks to remain a secret uh -huh. yet it has to rely on a group or cabal of mages or cultists in order to even exist yeah i i don't know it says that's you know only done by the most narcissistic of dragons that are gonna choose this path and there are those out there that yeah they can get minions and people love worshiping dragon but something tells me that all right I'm going to choose to go down this path. I'm a narcissistic dragon. My next step after becoming a Dracolich is to eat every single person that helped me become a Dracolich. Right? And the idea that they're like, ah, you know, it's, it's like the praying mantis thing, right? Where the male pre praying mantis wants to mate with the female and be like, just this one time, they're not going to eat my head off. <laughs> <laughs> but they eat the head off every single time. Yep. It, you know, it really, it comes down to like, essentially... The cultists, the cabal, they're Charlie Brown. And, and, the and the Dracolich is Peppermint Patty. You know, she's going to pull the football every time. You just know it. <laughs> All right, so becoming a Dracolich, it, it's, a, it's a cool thing if you're obsessed with power and ruling and what have you. But what, what makes the difference between a Dracolich and... A regular just evil dragon so again like I'm just totally wrapped up in this fact that you have this like like I always almost see drag Draco Lich as being kind of paranoid but to become a Draco Lich, you have to like embrace this this level of trust that seems to me would seem beyond that I, I, I agree and like when you look at the regular Lich there's nothing that says that they need a cabal of mages to become a regular Lich yeah so why is the Draco Lich requiring this thing Dra dragons are generally viewed as superior well, well so my thoughts are is the dragon itself is superior so much so it, you know it is basically a supernatural magical creature to begin with and it probably just requires that much more energy to to capture its life force in order to give it back into the dragon so the really cool thing about Dragon Liches, though, is the fact what you know, getting beyond it's like the weird way if they have to be made. But once you get past that, there is the sense, there is the thing that they have a phylactery like any other lich, which they use a gemstone for. Yep. Their spirit goes into it. Spirit goes from the gemstone back into the Dragon Lich. Okay. Now you kill and destroy the the Dracolich. Lich. Well, then spirit goes back into said gem. As long as they're on the same plane, essentially... You're all good. <laughs> you're all good. You can't really kill the Dracolich. Lich. Uh, and interestingly enough, though, but it's tracked in its flactory until that gem is exposed to another dead dragon. Which is hilarious, if you ask me. Because it's like, all right, here you're supposed to be this uber-powerful thing, and without another dead dragon you're just trapped i would want to like find a way to plant that gem on my in my in the party and eventually have them kill a dragon mm. that that would definitely be a way to go and if you had some kind of masking element or like maybe the maybe the gem is incorporated into another item like it's been the the phylactery has been so so lost to the ages that the dragon the dracolich is like it's the right. pommel of a great sword or something cool like that i would say like Im embedded in the blade so like when you do the killing blow that dragon spirit leaves and this one goes in what well, all right, so I'm, I'm taking a little liberty here, but I'm going on the impression as long as it's like close, close, it's gonna make the jump. But it, you know, like you're that would be either way. No matter how you do it, player deals the killing blow on the dragon, or you know he's in the vicinity of the dragon. Someone kills it. All of a sudden, 
the flesh begins to melt and sloth away, and then rises up in its pre in, in its place is a Drago Lich. That'd be pretty uh, pretty nasty to do to players. It would be a total dick move. I so want to do it now. Uh, yeah. Especially if your dragon dies easier than you thought it was going to. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is a way to totally change an encounter and be like, oh, well, you didn't you didn't realize this? And you know, you could have it not affect the the magic item in any way, shape, or form. Just well, it was just a carrier. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could do that, or you could even do something like, oh, there's, you could actually do, like, a dragon has the phylactery in its horde. Mm. Um, and also, like, the way dragons have always been described to me, and and the reason, one of the reasons why they're, 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 uh, they're so impenetrable and literally a suit of armor is the fact not only do they have these hardened scales, but because they, they hoard wealth and, and jewels and uh, coins and they, they nest in them, they sleep in them. It gets stuck to them. It, it gets embedded in their scales. You know, so like part of that armor class is like all this metal and gemstones encrusted in, in their hides. And like literally they could have like a flactory be one of those gems and not even know it. Nice. Yeah, you know, it somehow slipped its mind. Maybe there's a compulsion placed on the phylactery, like cause especially as you know what what Dracolich isn't going to be like, do something to try and get that gemstone so beyond the grave mm -hmm. to, to go well pseudo grave to go back to another dragon so it can come back into the realm of the living, mm -hmm. quote unquote, quote unquote. Now reading through here. Uh, uh, my brain always likes to say, okay, how can I do something that's utterly twisted and different from what everybody else is going to do? So reading through, it's like, oh, only the most narcissistic of dragons, and you know, you've got to be an adult or ancient dragon to make this happen. And my brain was like, well, what if you had like a youngling dragon be a dracolich? But you can't, you can't go through the process. But when you get down to the the dragon's already died. Well, the gem just has to come in contact with any dragon corpse. Doesn't yes. say of certain size. So you could have a, you know, essentially a young dragon that's a Dracolich. I think it'd be hilarious. So it would be, but the question is, do you use the original stats or the stats of the new body? I don't know. I'd be I'd be torn. I'd want to I'd want to like all right. You you can use the physical of the old stuff, but then I would use the breath weapon of and the ability. Uh, well, at the same time, it's also a ma magical creature, right? Mm -hmm. How funny would it kind of be to use a wormling? <laughs> yeah, like, like this dragon is barely bigger than the, the barbarian warrior. And you're like, whatever. <laughs> and it's throwing the party around like it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, but it's actually been inhabited by an ancient red dragon, uh, Dracolich. Yes. So so to me, that would be kind of fun to do as well. You could definitely toy with that. Uh, you know, again, it's going to take some interpretation of the rules, but I don't I don't see why not. Because the, the, essentially, the Dracolich that goes into the phylactery is the original dragon. Mm -hmm. And because of the magical nature you know, from start to end with dragons and a Dracolich in itself, I see no reason why going, all right, well, this little teeny tiny dragon is actually be completely bolstered by the spirit of this ancient being. So it's going to actually take on that no power. Problem. And it's not, it's, it's not gener physically generating the power, but supernaturally. And again, when, once, you know, all the, the, the skin and muscles sloth away anyway, the argument that, well, it's not as big and strong kind of goes out the window because you don't have muscles anymore. Because <laughs> it's sure it's the sheer magic that's animating the, the skeleton or the remains. I, I just think it would be something utterly hilarious to do uh, because it's it's unexpected. And you might say, oh, well, someone has an animated skeletal dragon, especially of something the size of a person or smaller. The party is going to like, oh, this must be a, a pushover encounter. It's it's more uh, animated thing as opposed to a pure undead thing. Yeah, well, that that would actually, yeah, exactly. That would be a ton of fun, and well, also the build up. Like you have like several sessions where they're talking about the the tyrant under the mountain, and you know the the town and the region is in terror of of this <laughs> of the, the the creature, this unspeakable evil. Uh, that has been plaguing them for millennia or centuries, decades, whatever, right? And 
and they always just talk about it. they don't, they always talk about it as being this is this immense threat this huge problem right but it turns out when they finally encounter him he's got little tiny dragon claws <laughs> you know because it's because it was a wormling that has been reinfested by this dragon you know so you can have a lot of fun with it and then like they finally comes out and it's like oh Rawr. <laughs> And it, it kind of reminds me of the Billy Gruff, uh, Billy, Billy Goat's Gruff. Gruff from Dresden Files. Yes. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but if, you, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. That, that's, that's very true. So you could, you, know, you could definitely mess with that. With it. That would be a different, another way of turning on his heel. The other thing, too, is I, uh, because they talk about this creature being narcissistic, I almost see like um, when it's inhibiting its, its normal form, would kind of go out of the way to find glamours to reinstall its former glory, you know, it, to look as impressive as it looked in life, mm -hmm. and, and be this magnificent creature. We also, you, know, you could you could add some extra flavor treasure that are you know either charisma buffs or or things that are just pretty, because it's it's going on the the whole vein concept. That would work as well. Or you know, what about you know the idea of the Draco Lich that actually gets driven from its original form, and has to take up a new form. But it considers the 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 new form inferior, right? Like it was a black and it got pushed into a white, right? Or you know it was a red and it got pushed into anything else. You know is going to be an inferior dragon species. So like now it's trying to figure out how to transfer itself back into. It, maybe it's maybe it's hunting for information on where other dragons are, and it plans to go go fight it for its body. Is, yeah, but then it also has the extra conundrum of, you know, how, um, I feel like they have to die in order to go back into the phylactery, like their physical form has to be destroyed, right. so that it can possess a new a new form. Right. Yeah. You know, so, or it would need a way to transfer itself from one to the other. Uh, may, you know, maybe it ca you know it has to maybe it requires the the living dragon, so it has to capture it and kind of like sacrifice it. You know, so it's like building up this huge army, and. You know, the players can come on this scene where you have this enormous red dragon that's kind of like been pinned to the ground by, you know, an army of thousands. And like, you know, the ropes and chains have it kind of like staked to the ground and its mouth is like kind of all all chained up. And, you know, and the Draco Lich is there like lo lording over it. And like, what do the players do? Hmm. Who's the bad guy? Who's the good guy? <laughs> they all, they, like, you just need, you need to call a tactical nuke right on that whole area. It's like, uh, this is not going to be good because, I mean, yeah, end result of, you know, one, one less chromatic dragon in the area. What do you do? But, you know, also, like, the, the, even the Monster Manual entry talks about them building up, you know, spy networks and, and, and uh, webs of information and I and I almost feel like this is like the kind of monster you could end you could actually start alluding to in the very beginning of your campaign where they're dealing with cultists or kobolds or or something like that's going to connect them later on to this Draco Lich and they could be servants and, min, and minions and and you can really span a whole campaign as as this ancient creature un, unfurls its 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 a uh, plot. And, and the players will start unraveling it. They gain its attention. And eventually, they're going to have to put it down. And now, at this point, you can go with one of the other ideas of, oh, it's trying to find the perfect form to, to re-inhabit. Or it is actually, you know, it is actually the Wormling that has been possessed by the Dracolich. Or, or you can just use, you know, a Dracolich as it is. But there's definitely a lot of fun ways to throw this into your game and build a campaign around it. Absolutely. I, I would even go so far as to say, like, you could have little mini bosses that it's either dominated or geezed in, into, you know, complete and utter service. And, like, it, it's like, oh, well, you know, you get up to this point here, and ah, now you've got to deal with this thing here. And, you know, maybe if you do the right thing, you might learn of yet another link in the chain that gets you back to the big thing, which you won't have any clue until, you know, yeah, yeah, it's a slow, you definitely want a slow, uh, slow reveal. You want to kind of like peel back layers and, and they don't even have to be geezed or compulsed. Like, you know, they, they just might be serving him because he's super powerful. Right. And and the thing is, like the lower level bosses may not even know what they're really serving, mm -hmm. you know, or it could be changed or transformed 
in the sense of the idea of what the cult is actually worshiping, right? They it could be a a cult of a dragon. They worship a dragon, and like, you know, your players go dragon, 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 and then they finally get to the end, and what and they realize that this is not a dragon, you know, or you know, the, one of the other guys we talked ideas we talked about where it's glamorous, so it still looks like a living dragon, and it wants to look as pretty as it ever did, and but as they're fighting it, things are off, or maybe they have a way to pierce the veil of its of its illusion and to realize that this is actually much more than what they anticipated. The question is, how will you use Draculich in your game? Let us know in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. You can hang out with us over on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. Lich uh, for Dungeons and Dragons and Monsters. So that's just what we're going to do. So 83 of your trusty 5th edition monster manual is the Dracolich template. So the thing about the Dracolich that's, that I'm finding a little fascinating is that it there there is this duality to it where the Dracolich whole existence it seeks to remain a secret. Mm -hmm. Yet Hey guys, Ted from Nerdarchy here, for Nerds by Nerds. Hanging out with me today is... Nerdarchy Steve. And today, I want to talk about dragons. But I want to talk about liches. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about dragon liches. liches. Hey, jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter. It's a great way to get RPG tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So we had a request in for us to do a drac... I'm a narcissistic dragon... My next step after becoming a Dracolich is to eat every single person that helped me become a Dracolich. Right? And the idea that they're like, ah, you know, it, it's like the praying mantis thing, right? Where the male pre praying mantis wants to mate with the female and be like, just this one time, they're not going to eat my head off. <laughs> <laughs> but they eat the head off every single time. Yep. It, you know, it really, it comes down to like, essentially, the cultists, the cabal, they're Charlie Brown. And the and the Dracolich is Peppermint Patty. You know, she's going to pull the football every time. You just know it. <laughs> All right. So, becoming a Dracolich, it, it's a it's a cool thing if you're obsessed with power and ruling and what have you. But it has to rely on a group or cabal of mages or cultists in order to even exist. Yeah, I I don't know. It says that it's you know, only done by the most narcissistic of dragons that are going to choose this path. And there are those out there that, yeah, they can get minions and people love worshipping dragons. But something tells me that, alright, I'm going to choose to go down this path. 